Hi, everyone. It's Kim McGrath from Expressions of the Universe. Not with your weekly wisdom, with your mid-June highlight stars and cards. I have the astrology. I have your cards for all zodiac signs. My card of the, I didn't pick a card, my card of the mid-June and the crystal. So let's get started. I want to try and make this as quick as possible. If I need to, I will time stamp this. Um, I did write a companion blog before I am doing this. So I would really encourage you to check out the companion blog because it will have everything in it that I wanted to say for the next couple of weeks of June. Um, and I want to just pare this down as much as possible so that I can get to doing what I need to do. So we are coming in to the new moon in Gemini. Gemini, the twins, two, two of something. It rules our mind, our thoughts, our words, communication, social life siblings, the neighborhood, our neighbors, transportation, technology, like our cell phones. Um, there's a myriad of things that it rules. And so with the new moon coming in, I just kept thinking about like, even over the last week, me being a Gemini, if I have too much clutter, physical clutter, I get cluttered in the mind. Uh, you know, being a Gemini, my mind is constantly going. And if there's too much crap around, then I can't think clearly. Um, and it is a scientific fact that when we have too much visual clutter, that it does give us anxiety and it impedes clarity of mind. So part of this new moon, I have off like a five day weekend. Um, so I'm focusing on clearing physical clutter and therefore to clear my mental clutter. Um, doing a lot of cleaning in the house. I'm throwing a lot of stuff away and also doing a lot of yard work. So I'll be spending a lot of time out in nature, which is always amazing for clearing the mind, big focus on that. So I encourage all of us to at least to, uh, try to declutter some areas in your life. I do give a tip in the blog about my 10 minute rule, you know, set a timer for 10 minutes and just, you know, clean, clear, throw away some, you know, an area or a space for that amount of time, just that little bit will make a huge difference. Um, or if you have a lot of, you know, a whole house full, a lot of clutter or things that you've been letting go of, start in the smallest room, like your bathroom, clean that head, you know, top to bottom and work it that way. Don't hit the closets, don't hit the drawers, don't go out and buying bins. You're getting rid of stuff for right now. You can tackle a section of your closet or a drawer or a cabinet in your 10 minute little timer thing. Um, the goal right now is just to try to make your space more visually appealing and less chaotic. Okay, so let's go into, I'm going to share my screen and bring up the slides. Where is the screen sharing? Where's the screen share? I can't find it. Share screen. There we go. All right. Put this into presentation mode. All 
All right, so here we have the mid-June highlight stars and cards for the new moon in Gemini. So at the beginning of June, I had everything for June listed. Well, the major things can only fit so much on a page and there's always stuff happening every day. So I took that out. I just left what we have for mid-June. Coming in, to mid-June, the first thing that's hitting is Saturn and Pisces stationing retrograde. You'll feel that, you know, it starts five days before, at least, because it's such a slow moving planet. Um, I posted something on Facebook and Instagram and it said, knock, knock, who this, or who's this, or who's there? Knock, knock, who's there? Karma baby. So Saturn and Pisces going retrograde, look at my notes, has us reflecting on past lessons, our own personal karma, and repetitive patterns that are not serving our highest good. Remember what comes around goes around and karma never forgets an address. So be mindful. Then we have that new moon in Gemini. I'll come back to that in a moment. June 19th, Venus enters pre-shadow. Venus will be retrograding until October. It's a long retrograde. Uh, Venus is the ruler of love, our hearts, creativity, art, beauty, and money. So... We're going to have to, a lot of themes uh, related to that. I'll be touching more on that probably maybe in the next video for the beginning of July, since the actual retrograde begins July 22nd. Um, but it is in Leo. And what I wrote in the blog is the pre-retrograde shadow is prepping us for a long reversal in Leo, the sun, the heart, conjuncting Mars at the beginning of this could bring a lot of loving creativity and heated romance into our lives. It can also bring a lot of drama and over the top ego arguments to our tables, especially between men and women, disparity issues and the spotlight disparity issues are in the spotlight and the spotlight, you know, like celebrity is definitely um, part of this retrograde. We could also see old sexual violation allegations, issues reemerging, power struggles, money, and things we value will all need to be reevaluated as well. Since the retrograde does, it, does not begin until the third week of July, we'll explore this next month. Just be on the lookout for the past returning, past romantic lovers, past financial issues, um, also power struggles with the opposite sex. Issues, and they run in eight-year cycles. So you're going to look back eight years, 16 years, 24, 32, 40, 48. Uh, those things, something maybe that you didn't finish may be coming back. It's a good time to start a new spending budget. Like really take a look at like, okay, what's my, what's the income? What's the money coming in? And what is going out? What am I spending my money on? So even if you do have a budget, it's a really great time to reevaluate your budget. Take a look at, you know, like necessity versus want, um, the value of our dollar, the value of your dollars. Like what can you maybe pare away, like get rid of that? Maybe you're just not getting the value for the money. Like, are you wasting money somewhere? And if you are able to save it, put it towards the things that you need or maybe, you know, start a little savings, you know, put anything that maybe you can shave off of your budget, put that extra money away for savings. But, you know, like Leo energy is very over the top. Um, this could bring back 
for the lower energies, like people that have been hurt horribly in love um, or people that maybe feel that they are not seen. They're going to demand to be seen. They're going to demand to be heard. So be on the lookout for all of the dramatic effects. Um, okay. Then we're coming into summer solstice, winter in the Southern hemisphere, and the sun moves into cancer. So I love that. Um, I'll talk about, I think I put the chart up in this slide. So I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, Mercury will enter cancer. So maybe we will be holding back a little bit with what we're saying. But when Mercury moves into Leo in a few weeks after, joining cancer, I mean, joining Venus and Mars in Leo, that's when things can really get blown up. And you know what? I didn't even think about that until I'm sitting here now. And I should have looked to see. I don't have within arm's reach my calendar to see when Mercury enters Leo. But we have time. Uh, I'll, you, know, I, you know I'll post about it. But that, that could be a little bit of a verbal explosion there and then we end the month with neptune retrograde in pisces and we're doing a deep dive into our intuition and our psychic abilities uh following our gut intuition and just really trying to get out of our head overthinking you know like the gemini sun and new moon and really sink down into that feeling, that connectedness that we have um, and learning how, take that time, take the next couple of months to learn how to really tune into your own intuition and your gut instinct. I know that I always second guess myself and then I kick myself. So I'm going, going to be really trying to practice that. And also, um, a while ago, I talked about a hell yes. So if somebody asks you to do something, somebody new comes into your life or like you're entering a new situation or an opportunity comes up or somebody says, hey, you want to go to dinner? You want to do this, whatever. If you don't immediately blurt out, yes, let's do that. Or you see somebody and you get this great feeling. If it isn't a hell yes, like in your gut, your intuition, then it has to be a hell no, or at least let me back up and think about it. Typically, if I have to think about something, if I have to take a moment, then I know that it's not right for me because anything that I want to jump right into, I know that I'm, that I'm following my intuition. So use that as a rule of thumb for yourselves in discerning whether you're up here or you're down here in your gut. I don't know if you could see where I'm pointing to. I'm pointing to my solar plexus. All right, so here's the new moon in Gemini chart. The points, I pointed out like some pretty important things, but the orange arrow shows us that we have the sun and the moon at 26 degrees, 43 minutes in the fourth house of home and hearth, the end of the matter in life, uh, the mother, the father. And so this is our safety, our security, our safe place. Going to go back to the twins, the thinkers, the communicators. It's our mind, it's our dexterity. Gemini rules the lungs, shoulders, arms, hands, um, all of the connecting tubes within our body, all ruled by Gemini. Um, Geminis have a tendency to absorb everything, overthink, 
the mental processes are never shutting off. I see that in the fourth house. It's saying, hey, time maybe to get out of your head. Um, I always recommend getting out and into nature helps you to get out of your head. But also too, it's, I'm going to revert back since we are at the midpoint of 2023. My word of the year was discernment. You know, try to be more discerning. Um, stop overthinking things. You know, use that hell yes, hell no rule that I have with the intuition. Um, this is a great time for journaling doing a lot of creative writing for those writers out there. Um, I don't know, my mind just went blank. I, I was on a roll of what I was thinking, but there we go. So we have, you know, with it being a new moon, it's a new way of thinking. It's a new way of communicating. Um, Try to be a better listener because communication is not all about speaking. Good communication involves a lot of listening um, and not thinking of, you know, like of how you're going to answer, actively listening. And uh, I'll save that for another time. So much, so much that can be said. Check out the blog. And then as I was writing down the highlighted signs, it turns out they're all highlighted. I don't think anybody goes unscathed because these are the opposites of each other. So, you know, we have, if I start here, Aries, Aries Libra, I would think really kind of has the easiest, easiest, but, you know, um, Libra, is trining this new moon. So it's getting assistance from this new moon in Gemini. They are sister signs. And next month, the North and South node will move into Aries and Libra. So they'll got a lot of work to do for July. Um, Gemini, you know, the new moon is there. The opposite of that is Sagittarius. Leo. So we have Venus and Mars. This is where Venus is getting ready to go retrograde in July, waiting for Mercury to speed through Cancer and meet up with them. Um, but Leo, the opposite of that is Aquarius. And Pluto has just retrograded back into Capricorn from Aquarius. So there, oh, that was another theme that I skipped over. I'm sorry about that. And I'm already annoyed by Capricorn having to go back. I mean, Pluto having to go back into Capricorn because all of the issues, institutions and foundations and finance and bankers and businessmen and corporation and religion and politics and all of that crap, all of that corruptness we have to look at again. We've got to go back and look at it a couple of times over the next two years before Pluto finally moves on in Aquarius, which is, you know, a new way of thinking, a new way of doing things, a more inclusive humanitarian way of doing things. But, you know, at this point in my life, I'm just like, I'm so over these old regimes of Capricorn, but you'll see all of those Capricornian chickens are coming to roost. And so we have to keep going back over, like to look at it, to say, oh, did I for did we forget anything? Is there something else we could touch on? We've got to clean up that mess. This is a 250 year old mess that the world has made for themselves to land us where we are now in the muck and corruption that we see everywhere in the world, not just the United States, uh, but everywhere. And so, yeah, we do have to keep retrograding and going back and looking just to make sure that we leave nothing behind, so to speak. Um, the opposite of 
Capricorn is Cancer. Not super affected, but there could be tension brewing if you are a Cancer Sun or you have a lot of planets there. Um, then we have our buddy Saturn that's going retrograde in Pisces. So the opposition of that is Virgo. And what else? Oh, Taurus and Scorpio. That's where the north and south nodes are currently. We also have Jupiter and Taurus and Uranus and Taurus. But you have to remember that these hard aspects in Leo and, you know, right on the cusp of Aquarius Capricorn, they square and make tension with Scorpio and Taurus. So even though it looks as though some of these signs and houses are empty, they technically aren't because you have to think about your own chart and what you have in your chart and what signs and blah, 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 blah. Ah. So anyway, um, yeah, that's what this chart looks like. And this is from the perspective of East Coast United States and the house system should carry you all the way up to mountain standard time. Pacific will just have a, a slight shift in the houses. Here is the solstice chart. And I just wanted to point out where the sun is up in the 10th house and where this stellium of the moon, Venus and Mars are in the 12th house. It's like behind the scenes fun. We have to hide our fun. I don't know. Uh, but with this sun being up here, not that I wrote about that. Um, I did. Oh, and I said that I would come back to it. Oh my goodness. Okay, it's early in the morning. And uh, so forgive me. So with this solstice, what I was picking up, it's summer in the Northern hemisphere, winter in the Southern. It's occurring on June 21st at 10.57 a.m. Eastern Standard Time when the sun moves into Cancer, which is a cardinal point. Cancer, Capricorn, Aries, and Libra are the cardinal points when the earth is shifting. I love that there's the stellium in Leo over here because I have my moon in Leo. So I'm hoping that it just makes me feel fantastic. Um, but what I was picking up is, you know, the sun being in the 10th house. That shows me we're going to be dealing with seeing developments in our outer world, especially, you know, with those Plutonian uh, the Pluto and Capricorn themes that I just spoke about. You're going to see a lot of crap going on. Look at Mercury, even though it's in Gemini, you know, it's it's in there in the 10th house. So expect a lot of news headlines coming out all summer long involving money, finance, banking, corporations, corporocracy, old regimes, institutions, infrastructures, foundations, religion, um, all of that corrupt crap. A lot of headlines with that. But also too, this is our own careers, our own goals. It's also the mother and the father and parental issues with a lot of us. Um, Saturn and Neptune in the seventh house. Oh, I forgot to put the arrow over here. That shows that there will be issues and fogginess surrounding our relationships with other people. Pluto retrograde in the fifth house of fun and romance, creativity and children uh, shows me that we need to take a look and a step back into our own childhoods and back to a time where we can find our own inner child. And let that younger version of ourselves come out and play for a few months. Strive to be less serious about everything. Um, yeah. So, and then I love, I love the stellium up here in the ninth house, which I, I didn't talk about in the blog, but this just says 
expect something unexpected overseas having to do with land. You know, we could see earthquakes, tsunamis, uh, but there could be travel. There could be, you know, exciting winnings, something big, something big blowing up, hopefully not. Um, and a couple of people, a couple of you called it when I, when uh, I Interstate 95 here in Philadelphia collapsed last weekend, um, you know, when I saw that chart in at the end of April and I was saying, oh my God, something's happening. But also we had the dam collapse in the Ukraine. Um, there was something else that I was talking to an astrologer about like, the astrology has been so literal lately, and so it kind of blows my mind with how literal it is. But we need to be on the lookout for things blowing up, crumbling down, you know, like I said, earthquakes, tsunamis, tornadoes, um, big, huge weather events that really take a lot of structures out so and then I kept this slide in that I stole from Chris Brennan at the astrology podcast just so that you could see the areas that this is going to hit I'm going to going to talk about this more next month I just really haven't had the time and I want to take this weekend and do the things that I need to do um get done what I need to get done. I want to, want to make this new moon in Gemini such a great new moon. It's like the wrap up of this month coming off my birthday, being a Gemini, this being the Gemini new moon, like I want to make the most of it. So I'm kind of going into hermit mode. Although I wouldn't mind going out to dinner with my friends tonight. And then now let's do the stars and cards. Okay. And I have to hurry up because I have a dental appointment to get a filling replaced. Nobody likes that, right? I've been putting it off for, for a while, for a couple of months, just putting it off, putting it off. And I'm like, okay, let me just get this done. All right. So the crystal card, the crystal that I randomly chose for the end of June for mid month and the end it's actually kind of a leo based card and it's will like our will will power and it is the crystal of malachite and of course i can't find my good one whenever i pull these cards i can never find the stone and i have bins and bins and bins of stones and i look through them and i can never find it I look on my altar and like, I'll even know where the stone is. And I'm like, I know I just saw it there and then it's gone, but I do have, I have some malachite. This is a really great heart healing stone. When we heal our hearts, we, we supercharge and empower our solar plexus. That's what our willpower is. So I'm trying to hold this together. So this is, piece of malachite it's like really interesting I love the patterns this is just a smaller piece I know my friend Jen Blake has a malachite elephant that I really want to buy from her but I just can't at the present time so this malachite I used to wear in my bra for heart healing when I lost my mom and I grieved so deeply that the malachite actually broke in half. Um, it's, and so many of my master crystal friends were like, I've never seen malachite break in half. I've dropped malachite. It doesn't break because it's so super hard. That I think explains the extent of my grief. So I, I don't use this. I could bury it in the earth. I could take crystal glue and glue it back. Um, but I, I really don't use this that often. 
That's how powerful malachite is. A lot of people have a hard time working with it because it forces you to heal your heart. It, it just, you don't have a choice um, and things are gonna come up and it's gonna bubble up those emotions and situations are gonna come up for you to face healing. And that it's plain and simple. And, you know, even with the obsidian that I had chose at the beginning of the month, you know, an extremely skilled metaphysician, I will not name names, uh, that I know who is a healer, you know, decades and decades of doing the work won't use obsidian because. This person does not want to get in touch with their emotions. They don't like to feel what comes up from the obsidian. That was the, the stone that I pulled for the entire month of June. So to put this with the obsidian, I think that's perfect. The thing is, is that I know a lot of people that are so fearful of what can happen when you dive in, when you try to do the healing work that you really can't do it unless you do just dive right in. So it's nothing to fear. What's, I, I, what I think is worse is holding on to the grief and the anger and the pain and the sadness. Why prolong it? You know, that's, that's the way I see it anyway. I'm going to pull cards from New Moon Manifestation, New Moon All the Moonology deck, Manifestation deck for all of us. I'll start with Aries. And I'll send you on your way. Aries. First quarter moon in Pisces. Honor your feelings, Aries. This is about really getting out of the head, into your heart, honoring your feelings. Um, that first quarter moon in Pisces. Pisces, I don't know when it, when it is, but the new moon in Pisces or the uh, full moon in Pisces will be coming in somewhere at the end of August, beginning of September. So take this summer, take this time to really start honoring your feelings. And in order to do that, work with this new moon to get out of your head and tap into your intuition. Taurus, suns, risings, and moon. Last quarter, moon, and cancer. Take a breather. So for Tauruses, you know, like you're just coming out of Taurus season not too long ago. It's probably been a whirlwind with Jupiter and Uranus and the no North Node in your sign. Take this summer off. Take a breather. Take a break. Um, things are going to spice up come the fall when the sun moves into Scorpio. Geminis, this is your new moon, Geminis. Let's see, new moon in Taurus, know your worth. I love that. So for Geminis, it is about finding your value. How do you value yourself? That has been the big theme for the past couple of months, but it's all in the way that you think, what do you say to yourself? Like, are you, you know, striving to do your best so that you have less self-judgment? Like, if you know you're doing your best, then stop judging yourself. Know your own worth. Don't allow people to walk all over you. Cancers. Full moon in Sagittarius. See the bigger picture, Cancer. So, you know, sometimes you're just stuck in your little shell, in your own little world, which is AKA your house. I know I love being a hermit. Um, so therefore, maybe your perspective is very small. It's time for you to widen that lens, see the bigger picture in situations because you'll get along better with people if you, if you can see that bigger picture. Oh as to why somebody's thinking this way or why they're doing something a certain way. Leo, full moon in Aquarius. Well, that's interesting because that full moon in Aquarius happens when the sun is in Leo. 
it says be real. Time for you to get out into nature, Leo. Get down to your roots, get grounded. Uh, this is going to be a tumultuous few months. It could be great for creativity, getting out into the spotlight, having your voice heard, but you have to be very realistic about what's going on in your world. It's not all about you. There's a lot else going on. So be realistic. Virgos. Last quarter moon in Virgo. Hmm, attend to the details. Well, I know that my Virgo friends, uh, whether they're a sun, Virgo sun, Virgo rising or Virgo moon or a Virgo stellium like myself, will have no issues attending to the details. The minutia, getting all those little things done, wrapping up the loose ends. Get it all done during the summer, Virgos, before your birthday season comes. And then you can sit back and enjoy. Libra, new moon in Libra. Love that. It says, know that you are loved. And that's really beautiful. Ah, try to, the card is so much prettier than, I guess my light is too, too bright. Know that you are loved. So Libra, have you been feeling that you aren't loved? Then it's time for you to start loving yourself. Scorpios, new moon in Gemini, think it through. Well, you know what? That's difficult for the Scorpio about the thinking it through. And oh, it is the new moon in Gemini. So interesting. Um, it's difficult for the Scorpios because it's all about your feelings and your passions, the emotions. It's hard for Scorpios to get up into their head, but maybe that's exactly what you need to do. Get out of that emotional state and into the mental state. Um, you know, there is that in conjunct between Gemini and Scorpio. So, you know, there's always some sort of disconnect, so to speak, or disparity, um, a disinterest, so to speak. But maybe that's exactly what you need to do, Scorpios, is to start planning things mentally and not emotionally. All right, Sagittarius. New moon in Virgo, trust all will be well. And I love that. Um, But that's interesting because usually Sagittarians just, you know, they run off, they fly off without a care in the world. They don't worry about those details. They don't worry if it's all going to work out. They just go and do what, you know, they follow their hearts, whatever they want. So I'd be curious to know if there are any Sagittarians out there that have something that's weighing on them heavily know that all will be well. Um, Capricorns, last corner moon in Capricorn. This is perfect for the Capricorns. It says, leave the past behind. And that is what Pluto retrograde in Capricorn is trying to do. And you know what? I know it's probably difficult and painful for all those Capricorn suns, risings and moons, but it's time to leave the past behind. Clean it up so that you can move on whatever direction this is going in. <clears throat> Aquarius. Full moon in Scorpio. Breathe through the tension. Okay, Aquarius. Yes, the opposition of Venus and Mars in Leo and then that retrograde is going to put a lot of tension pressure on the Aquarians. And so this is just saying to breathe through it. Deep breaths, blow it out. Don't put up with the bullshit though. Let it go. Breathe it out. And then last but not least, Pisces. You have new moon in Leo. It's time for Pisces to shine. Soak in that sun, Pisces. Get out there. Go play in the ocean, go swimming in the pool or the river or a creek. 
uh, take your shoes off, walk in a sunflower field on your way to a water source. Perfect, perfect thing for Pisces to do. Um, allow yourself to shine, allow yourself to have that fun. So that is all I have. I, I think I got everybody. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve signs. Okay, I wanted to make sure I didn't forget anybody. I get so in the ethereal when I'm doing this that I, I, I'm not always here, and I never remember what I say either afterwards. Anyway, happy new moon to all of you. Happy new moon in Gemini. I'll I will be back in about two weeks with your July forecast. Um, up until then, make sure you write down your new moon intentions, burn them in the fire, light a candle, clear the clutter, both mentally and physically. And I wish you a beautiful new moon and a lovely summer, winter solstice. Thank you for watching. Bye. If I can exit this. Love you all.